companies have left sight, Chris has now given up full-time work and there's no such thing as a free evening or weekend for the boys. They're busy fitting the windows, they've covered the roof structure with fireboard and are preparing it for the thatch. It'd be good to start seeing the roof going on. I mean, that's quite a, uh, I see that as quite a milestone really, to yeah. start seeing the thatch go back onto the house. Fifth generation thatcher Scott Sharp is using 50 bundles of combed wheat reed, which is tied and fixed to the roof's wooden battens with screws. The pitch of the roof is paramount. It must be more than 45 degrees, as this allows rain to roll off quickly and doesn't allow snow to build up in the winter. At a cost of £18,000, the thatched roof will be maintenance free for the first 15 years, but will need to be completely replaced in about 30 years. Another of the many jobs Chris has also taken on is the finishing of the exterior covering. So we're putting this insulation on the outside of the house because the sit panel itself uh, is obviously joined together and there's gaps down where uh, cold air can pass through. So we've, we've gone belt and braces and gone for the insulation on the outside. It's going to be a house that hardly needs any heating at all. The boys may be devoting every spare minute of the day to the build, but Mark's banking on there being a payoff. You know, we've had to, um, you know, all of this is saving money. You know, we could have paid a few thousand pounds to have someone install the windows, but we thought we'll do it to save that bit, you know, bit more money, go towards my bespoke kitchen. Wherever possible, Mark and Chris have employed the skills of traditional craftsmen. As well as the thatch, they've commissioned a bespoke staircase, so they're taking the opportunity to see it being made in the workshop. So Howard, it's not a, a standard green oak um, timber that you use, no, is it? the timber is uh, American white oak, yeah. and the Americans kill their oak down to 9%, which is an ideal moisture content for a central heated home. Right. And um, you should have no come back with shrinkage or splitting or twisting. Which is really important with the staircase, That's isn't right. it? Yeah, yeah. When I first met the boys, they were understandably apprehensive about this build going without a hitch, but fingers crossed, for the time being, they seem to have everything well under control. It's been a good six months since I was last here and I know for Chris and Mark this has been a real labour of love and very time consuming but now it's finished and I can't wait to see it as I feel it's going to be a real work of art. On my last visit it was hard to imagine how the very modern looking timber shell was ever going to replicate the original cottage but I'm completely taken aback at the transformation. It's the mirror image of the original only this one is pristine faultless and, as expected, a tribute to both cutting edge and age-old craftsmanship. The wheat reed thatch, cream render and pretty porch are the epitome of cottage chic and it's hard to believe that there's a flat pack hidden beneath this picture postcard facade. Hello. Hi guys, right. yes I am and I am now in love with your house. <laughs> it's beautiful from the outside. Thank you. But in here it's even more stunning. It's been blood, sweat and tears to get to this point now, hasn't it? <laughs> it's been a fair old bit. But you've done it! Time and time you've in, you've spent the night? Yeah, 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 yeah we spent the night. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous, I love it. It feels like it's stood here for years, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Actually, a chap, a chap came in the other day, a carpenter, and he was saying, how old is the property? Yeah, so <laughs> Which is the best compliment, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Both of you did an awful lot of the work yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Inside, the biggest job was the plasterboarding, to be honest. Mm. We did all and, the it, plasterboard. and it nearly sent us bonkers. Really. Yeah, yeah, and we did all the reef insulation and we did the fireboarding underneath the thatch. We did all the render sort of secondary board. insulation work and all the render boards. And the so loads there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the wood on the, the eight frame board. in the wall system went up like within a month. And then <laughs> they went and it was like, here, yeah. guys, that's it. And we we're like, oh, we've got to do all the work now. <laughs> You've done a crap. Cracking job, you Thank really you. have, it's just stunning. Chris and Mark's hard work has certainly paid off. They have turned this space around with real flair and style. Their modern take on a traditional cottage with travertine floors, exposed oak and reclaimed bricks from the original cottage works so well. And they've pushed the original footprint of the cottage out to the back to create a mini atrium come snug with skylights and French doors out to the garden. Not only is this a great space, but it leads through to a kitchen diner, creating a layout that flows seamlessly from one room to the next. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's beautiful. 
Thank you. And clearly bespoke and clearly breathtaking. You must be absolutely delighted with this, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Stunning. I think kitchens are so important. They can either make or break a house. Yeah. And it's just, look, fields, horses, yeah, chickens. Yeah, yeah. God, you can go off some people. Come on, let's go <laughs> upstairs. It's gorgeous. They've crammed an awful lot of oak into the kitchen. And when I first saw it, I wondered if it would make the room feel oppressive. But my fears have been allayed. The cottage windows, beautiful pale painted kitchen and down lighters make for a delightful space. Oh, it just feels like such a homely house. It's just beautiful. Wow, look at that light. That's <laughs> Upstairs, it's a whole different ball game from when I was last here. And the cottage's beautiful oak framework just keeps on giving. A queen truss takes centre stage in the master bedroom. And even the bathroom is graced with a simple collared truss that finishes the room perfectly. But I have to say, it's the feature bedroom's transformation which is the most impressive. Oh, see, now I think this is my favourite room in the house. <laughs> and this was, the, I can remember when I was here, we were talking about whether or not you should have this room or the room at the other end with the ensuite. Clearly you've ignored my advice because I said <laughs> go for this one. <laughs> What are you going to do with this room? I think maybe buy a nice sofa city there, so like... Perfect, people can stay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and this will be like a little snug, like... Oh, I know, just love it. The fireplace. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, the fireplace is incredible. It's quite an extravagant thing to have in a room upstairs yes. because it does dominate the room and, it, and it's quite deep, isn't it? Yeah. Were you adamant that you wanted this? Was this one of the... I, 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 Chris's. Yeah, <laughs> I was quite particularly adamant about having a fireplace upstairs. It kind of went with the character of the yeah. cottage and... This room is just, it's a, it's a visual onslaught of the senses. Yeah. So you come in here and everywhere you look, there's something amazing. Sling brace trust. Sling brace trust. Oh gosh, it's beautiful. When we originally looked at the design with the oak frame company, we looked at it and we almost stripped it out because of cost. But then, then we ended up putting them back in. <laughs> it was like, oh, that's really boring. So when, yeah. you know. Beautiful. Right, back downstairs, more logs on the fire. <laughs> so it's been a pretty long journey for you two to get to this point, hasn't it? But now you're here and you're settling in. Are you glad you did it? We've been through quite a tough journey and um, mm. we, it's pretty fair to say that we wouldn't have being able to do it without our support from our families and, yeah. and family friends especially. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a tough ride. It's a beautiful, beautiful house and it's very unusual. This is the first thatched flat pack I've ever seen. Mm. Did you ever think about going down the conventional route? We, we did, but we liked the speed and efficiency mm. of bringing those contractors together and having it kind of designed off-site and mm. built off-site and then brought to site. So credit to you both. It's a stunning house. What part of the house is your biggest indulgence? I would say all of it as such, because <laughs> it's like the oak frame was an indulgence. You know, we're trying to replicate from the old house and then... And then the kitchen. Um, yeah, and then it ends up the bathrooms and then Chris's fireplace and it's mm. just like, you know. So this is where the fun starts because you're in now, practically, and you can really start to enjoy the space. So do, because it is just lovely. Thank you. This cottage is a triumph of mixing the old and the new and for me Chris and Mark have totally reinvented the flat pack home and created a really unique house. Now the original cottage stood here for 300 years and I can't see any reason why this one won't too.